Hey, this is Kotlin Conversations, where we're having conversations with just some of the many wonderful guests and speakers here at Kotlin Conf 2024. I'm Quinn Twit Dow, and I'm speaking with Patty and Kotlin. And I'm very lucky as we have two of the Kotlin multi platform contest winners, Patty and Caleb. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Patty? Tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself and what you're doing. Yeah, so I recently graduated and I'm working as a back end developer now. So this was kind of like a way for me to dig into mobile a little bit, mobile development, since I haven't worked with that. Brilliant. And you, Caleb? Uh, I'm a student still at Strathmore in Nairobi, Kenya, mm -hmm. and I also work as an Android developer for a company there, mainly both Android and iOS developer. So yeah, that's why I am here. Brilliant. Uh, and I guess what inspired you or motivated uh, both of you, uh, Caleb, I'll start with you, uh, to, to kind of do the contest? Like, what was, your, what was your motivation to join the contest? So we had a unit on mobile development mm -hmm. during the course of the semester and our lecturer pointed out that there was a contest going on yeah yeah so i thought about it and i was like okay i'll do it but i won't do it <laughs> you know, so I, I didn't really pay much attention to it mm -hmm. because i had another contest running during that time oh wow okay yeah. <laughs> so now then after the first one was over and i realized i have some free time i thought okay this might be a good time to learn and actually a good opportunity to I wasn't really thinking I'd win. I just thought like, okay, maybe I'd get a t-shirt and that's it. You know? <laughs> so I did, I submitted, I was happy with what I had and I was like, okay, let's go do it and let's see. Yeah. yeah. And how about you, Patty? I was kind of the same way where I didn't really expect anything, but for me, I was looking at Kotlin because at work we were switching over. Yeah, yeah. So I was looking at some of the documentation and I think I ran across it in the Google search that I did at one point. And I was like, oh, what's this? Brilliant. And I just kind of entered, saw what happened, just as a learning experience, really. But And now yeah. you're here. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> uh, so I, I want to talk a little bit about your projects, uh, and they're both wonderful patty uh so yours is kind of like a, a helpful tool for other other students uh, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about your project yeah so again i just graduated so when you graduate you kind of start to think like oh like where was i before and i was yeah. like it was really hard to choose a college with the financial decision of it 100%. so i was really hoping there was a tool already and i didn't see one so i made one mm -hmm. excellent and yeah. uh Caleb, you did actually like a kind of like a your own version of Lightroom is in, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Pix Pixly yeah, is that Pixley, correct? Yeah. Yeah. What was your What was your inspiration for that? Oh, okay. So I love images. Yeah. Not images of myself, <laughs> but I do love images. I enjoy taking images. I enjoy editing images. So my th my problem was, I am mainly a Linux user, mm. but then Linux does not support a does not have a robust image editor. We have one that no one likes. Everyone uses it to <laughs> kind of tell us that you, you people who did it made a really bad job. So my question was, or my concern was, I would love to edit images, but so how do I do it on Linux mm -hmm. without me needing to switch to Windows or Mac? Mm -hmm. So I decided I'm going to take matters into my own hands. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. yeah. So that's how I took matters into my own hands. So I was like wondering, which is the best tool for this and which is the easiest tool. Mm -hmm. And I realized that Compose have Linux support. I was like, okay, this is a good tool because I used it a bit before. And then I was like, the, the app part, the Android part was, was just a by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the requirement was it ran on two platforms. Yeah. But my main focus was on the Linux part or the desktop part. I, yeah. I like that because I just I'm an Android developer, so I think often I see KMP in just the context of mobile. But I I, I mean I I've only kind of flirted with Linux a little bit, pardon the the phrasing. But I think that's actually a great place for KMP to have opportunities. Is you know kind of again as you said, kind of filling niches in yeah. Linux software. Yeah. Because uh, I understand it just because like you know uh, Linux is wonderful, but I think you know th there's a lot of like the Windows and Mac tools, especially for like photo yeah. media, are just well established. They're old. They're just yeah. been around forever. So. They, they're just, I, I guess, fully baked, not necessarily the best thing ever, but they've just been around for yeah. a while. So I like that you filled that niche. And, and again, in terms of the feeling niche is that you're right, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy how, uh, especially for like uni and, and kind of information, how we live in, it's 2024 and we just don't 
have yeah. enough tooling. Uh, what was like the biggest challenge for you in building an app that you feel that other students or rather students now can could benefit from? Like, was it the data? Mm. Was it like trying to create a good usable UX that, you know, that wasn't like overwhelming? Because I, I think that's mm -hmm. what I remember. It's been a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I remember just being a little bit overwhelmed. Like, what was mm -hmm. the biggest challenge? It was definitely finding data that was accurate because I wanted to make sure it was like real time data rather than just example data. Mm -hmm. And I was able to find an API that did it through College Board, but their API was kind of hard to navigate. Mm -hmm. So then when that came to actually make the calls that you need to like get all the universities, for example, in America, um, the performance needed to be adapted, so that was also a challenge to make sure that it rendered in the time that it needed when you click on the button, you know? Right, right, right. And I mean, obviously, like, I, it's, it's like an important thing, and I think especially with UI development, even if someone, even if, even if data or a task is very critical, if the UI is bad, if the UX is bad, if it mm -hmm. takes too long, then you're kind of like, well, shoot, I'm, I don't know, I'll do it the old fashioned way yeah. or just like co collate the data myself. But that's cool that you paid attention to both like the accuracy of the data mm -hmm. and as well like the user experience. Um, actually, and um, in terms of like design and stuff, like your your app actually would seem very like quite, <laughs> quite like fully formed. I mean, honestly better than, again, it's been a long time, so I might just be out of date myself, but it seemed like very well, like well full, full formed and a lot more like well designed than half of the stuff I used. Um, did you just like, how, how did you uh, kind of like work on that element, like design of it? Did you just design yourself um, or? I definitely just designed it myself, but it was a lot of just like trial and error. I have a bad design eye. So every like few hours I would call my brother over or my mom and be like, hey, can you come look at this? Like, mm -hmm. is this, does this look okay? And they would help me tweak it a little bit to get mm -hmm. to where we are now. And uh, Caleb, I know like uh, I've, I've done a tiny bit of like media manipulation on like mobile myself. So I imagine that a lot of it, a performance might have played a role in your app as well. Is that right? Or was there something else that was the biggest challenge? Ha, everything was hard. <laughs> no, that, yeah. that's also yeah, fair. Yeah, it's media, hard. yeah, images. Because for, my, for me, I could not write the main, what should I the image manipulations could not be done in Kotlin mm -hmm. since Kotlin has the GC overhead and right, other things. Right. So I had to go and write a uh, bridging layer with Rust, which is hard, mm -hmm. so hard I almost quit. Then after doing that, after everything be that was I thought was hard was okay, everything now started crashing and I did not know why <laughs> they were crashing. So I was always wondering there were weird crashes that will happen after five minutes later on mm -hmm. then the memory would spike to one gigabyte and i'll just yeah. open one image so yeah, i'm wondering yeah. hey okay so what do i do mm -hmm. so yeah performance was really important for me i had to do my research learn way too much <laughs> probably unnecessary knowledge sometimes of how Things like the JVM work and how mm. the memory is managed in the JVM, what to do if you want to do this. Mm -hmm. I had to go and learn about how images work and compose and multi-platform. So many things that mm -hmm. I usually say in, in, in such fields, you either die a millionaire or die poor. There, there is no <laughs> in-between. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I was lucky I died a millionaire because I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, everything was... I had to focus on everything. The UI had to work quickly so that you see something and you see immediately what is happening on the mm -hmm. other side. And that had to be done with so many layers in between. So I had to be really careful on how I write my code. Yeah. Yeah, I think especially for image editing because because you're manipulating the image very directly often that, yeah. as you said, performance yeah. and, and that feedback loop is so yeah. important that it, if you have lag, then it's almost non-functional because then what you intend to do with, you know, manipulation doesn't communicate. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's always interesting that um, as an engineer, like, uh, and as, especially as an app developer, when I talk to people that aren't in engineering, they, they kind of expect, like, especially now we, we you know, images on, on phones or, or just in general, Im image manipulation or media is everywhere. And so I think people that don't do engineering don't appreciate how really, really, really hard it is to yeah. take a few megabytes or maybe like a, a, a several megabytes, hopefully, file and start pushing it around, applying. I know you had like had Gaussian filters and all kinds yeah. of stuff. Like after a while, like, oh, there's a lot less memory than one would think available to us mm. poor engineers. Yeah. <laughs> like we don't actually get the whole device. We kind of get some allotment. So it starts to run up very quickly. And then, yeah, I've, I've definitely 
had too many <laughs> um uh, out of memory exceptions in my life. So I'm very I'm very sympathetic to that. Uh, what do you think your biggest Obviously, you learned a lot about images, but in general, in terms of like maybe whether it's about using multi-platform or building the experiences, what do you think was your biggest takeaway from the experience of doing of doing your projects or, or doing the contest? Uh, we'll start with Caleb. Yeah. Oh, the multi-platform is nice. I enjoyed writing it. I code a lot. Sometimes I don't enjoy it because it gets to a point where it's taxing and bothersome yeah but you have to do it because either it's a work or a school project so mm -hmm. it has to be done and these are the parameters you have yeah. but for now i was like okay we're just doing multi-platform just kotlin because i love kotlin yeah, yeah so yeah. for me it was okay let's enjoy this for once <laughs> maybe this one does not have any strings attached to it so i can play around with it a bit play with the logic a bit see what works and what sticks and what doesn't without any pressure and because there was not that attached problem or a solution that someone needed i had i actually enjoyed working on it yep. so yeah so that means right now i have fond memories of kotlin multi-platform we hope we stay yeah. that way are, are you going to continue working on pixly do you think or do you think you need a break from it for a bit and... no i'm working on it but also i made the library that does the image manipulation mm -hmm, yeah. myself so I'm working fast on that to have a strong foundation. Yeah. Then I can go back to Pixly that to just sense. be the GUI. When someone asks where's the GUI, I'm telling, this is it. It's written in Kotlin multi-platform. You should check that out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Patty? What was your biggest takeaway from the whole experience? Um, again, I never did mobile development before. So I think just having a chance to do that and dive into a topic other than the one I'm usually involved in was mm -hmm. definitely very fun. And that was definitely my biggest takeaway. I learned a lot about how front end and back end connects together and how I didn't even know that like iOS and Android had two different code bases. Mm -hmm. So even like learning that was um, yeah, definitely yeah. very gratifying. Yeah, well, I always appreciate it. I know like a lot of times, especially depending on the company that you work for, back end and front end tend to be a little bit further, mm -hmm. more, more separated than we want. So having a little bit of empathy from front end <laughs> to back end and back end to front end sounds, sounds lovely for me. So I'm glad for that. Um, are you going to continue working on your app or? Yeah, I actually, one, I really like Kotlin. And then two, I thought the multi-platform was easy to use and I feel like it would be fun to do other projects with it. Yeah. So if I want to do like a side project to learn something, I think I probably will do it on an, yeah. a mobile device. Absolutely. And of course, uh, insert you know, usual spiel about multi-platform, <laughs> right once, run everywhere kind of like benefits. Yeah. So that's awesome. Well, thank you both for joining me. Congratulations again on, well, number one, congrats on all the hard work on getting here, on winning the contest and on you know your lovely and awesome submissions. Um, if anyone wanted to kind of find your projects or find you on the internet, how can they do that? Uh, Patty. Yeah, I have my project uploaded on GitHub and okay. it's just Patty Bachleta, which is my name. Okay, and Caleb? Uh, also on GitHub. Okay. Etemesi, yeah. which is my second name, and then okay. 254, which is my country code. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Well, definitely, if you are interested in uh, Patty and Caleb's project, also there was like a third winner who couldn't be with us, but if you're curious what the Kotlin multi-platform winners are up to, definitely go and check them out. The apps are amazing, especially for how long did you guys have to do these projects? Like, um, Mine took a few weeks. It's few, hard to ask. A few weeks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Caleb. I had from, I started in November, late November, okay. finished on January. But we had exams in the middle of the... So, well, yeah. so you were busy and you did yes. these projects yeah. in weeks to two months. Okay, so anyway, the amazing work done in a very short period of time by Caleb and Patty. Uh, and, um, and yeah, please check it out. And uh, if you are a student, happen to be watching this and you're interested in, you know, just expanding a little bit, maybe in between exams and other things when you have time, hopefully, uh, maybe check out the Kotlin Multi-Platform Contest for next year. But yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Patty and Caleb. And thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.